Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to test your welds at home. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a pipeline welder for about eight years now. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. All right, so the first thing I gotta do is make a weld. I finished this one the other day. I ran a little uphill on it. I'll uh, just keep my hand in that uh, uphill on this pipe, but got a set of bevels right here that I'm gonna clean up space and go ahead and make a weld. I'm gonna make one side as clean as I can, and then the other side I'm gonna intentionally make dirty. That way, whenever we break them, you guys can see the difference. So, let's go ahead and get started. I've had a lot of questions here lately on what welding shirts I wear. These here that most people are probably asking about are Martin Brothers. Uh, you can find them online. Just Google Martin Brothers welding shirts. But I also wear Lapco and a few other, uh, I've tried a few other brands, but I'll link a couple of videos in the description that that's all I talk about is the apparel that I wear, the welding stuff that I wear. We'll link those in the description. All that you're gonna need to test your own welds at home to see if there's trash in your welds is a vise or you can put something in your receiver hitch with a hole in it to fit a strap in and then like a cheater bar a piece of pipe you can use a, the pipe from a jack stand to break them over sometimes uh, or like a big crescent you can, you can break them with that um, these are called what, what i'm going to do they're called nicks it's actually something we do on a lot of tests they do bend tests but they also pull what we call nicks and that's what these are that's something you can do right here at home with a zip disc so but yeah, all you're gonna need is a, a vise and a zip disc and then your, you know, your everyday tools you need to, to obviously make a weld and, uh, and uh, things like that, clean up your straps and everything, so. Alright, so I'm going to run a 1-8 bead rod. Depending on what test I'm practicing for will depend on, you know, whether I run a 1-8 bead or a 532 bead rod. Uh, I'm going to practice puddle capping on a 45 375 wall, which means just one pass for a cap instead of like two or three or more. So I'm going to run a 1-8 trying to keep that space as narrow as possible. That way whenever I go to cap it, I only have to cap as narrow as possible. All right, got ahead of myself there. I uh, So what I did here was I ground this side, not totally clean, but I ground it, but I did not grind this side. And I went ahead and ran me a 532 hot pass. Um, I'm gonna run me a 532 hot pass over here. Try to make this my clean side and this my, my dirty side. That way we can get some dirty straps and some clean straps. Come on.
All right, got her all welded out. What I'm gonna do now is cut out at least two straps. Hopefully one clean one, one dirty one to show you guys the difference. A lot of times on 12 inch, they'll pull like two roots, two face bends, two root bends, two face bends, and then like two or four nicks, depending on the procedure and the gas company and all that stuff. Since I don't have a way to bend it, I mean, I guess you could bend your own like in a vise also, but I'm gonna actually nick these and uh, show you guys, you know, what the common procedure is as far as how far you nick it and everything, and then I'm gonna break it so you can see how you can tell whether your weld's clean or not. But the first thing I'm gonna do is clean my torch tip. They do have what they call a uh, strap cutter, but I don't have one of those. It's a thing that sits on the pipe, and you put your barrel torch in it, and it's got little things just like a beveling machine, little knobs to spin it to go one way, and it's got a, a knob over here to spin it to go the other way. So, but anyway, I'm gonna lay them out. Your average strap is usually one inch by nine inches, and uh, I didn't think about this. We're gonna have a weld. We're gonna have two welds here, maybe even three. Uh, but that's all right. This is all just for uh, just for practice and example. So whenever I clean my torch tip, I like to take a fine file and file all the stuff off the end, get it nice and shiny again, and then uh, obviously take torch tip cleaners and run them in inside, in and out of these holes here. A clean torch tip is key to me anyway. It makes the job a lot more enjoyable, a lot more enjoyable. I apologize about the wind, by the way. We're in the process of moving into this building over here. Uh, we're moving all our industrial tradition and AROS welding products out to this building. And Kayla and her mom and grandma just got through painting it on the inside. So we've got our deep freezes and everything in my shop, so can't be in out of the weather. But today is absolutely gorgeous. Besides the little breeze, it's not good for filming, but it feels good. It's supposed to be like 70 some degrees today. Shee! All right. All right, there's my bottom right there. This is the weld. Oh, that's an old weld. This is the weld we just made here tops right here let's pull one strap out of right here on the dead side that'll be my clean one there and then let's pull this thing's gotta be dirty right in here I'm gonna use this because it's one inch wide your average straps one inch by nine inches some people asked in the comments where i got this clamp and i just want to mention it real quick it's flange wizard is the brand but it comes in three so you can put it on like a four foot straight edge all it is is a magnet you just clamp you know i put one on here just for cutting smaller stuff but you can put it on a four foot two foot whatever you want but yeah flange wizard is the brand they make a two foot let me grab it slang term is whiskey stick these magnets are all built in. Three of them on here. It's about two foot long, if I remember right. Yeah, a lot of guys call that a whiskey stick, but just to just a guide, all it is to help keep your torch straight. Went back whenever I worked on drilling rigs. Guys always carried these on the truck, and it's super super handy. All right, so you've got your strap cut out, and whenever I say nick, I mean I'm gonna take a zip disc, which is what's on this grinder, and I'm gonna scar the face right down the center, just about a about a sixteenth deep or like an eighth inch, depending on the inspector. But we're not talking about test day here. I have to remember that. But anyway, all you're doing with this nick 
whenever you're you're scarring this weld is you're controlling the brake you want this weld to break right down the center of the weld so anyway they usually call for an eighth inch deep on the edges and then like a sixteenth across the face if it won't break then sometimes they'll have you go just a touch deeper but you know if this is only one inch and you go an eighth inch deep and an eighth inch deep that only leaves three quarters of an inch of weld to look at so that's why like on test day even though I'm not talking about test day in this video on test day you really want to get with that inspector and ask him how he wants it but anyway you're just controlling the brake so we'll just uh, I reckon at home if you're gonna break your straps you can uh, you can cut two inch straps you know and 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 nick your welds even deeper if you want to just and that way you have more weld to look at but anyway that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go eighth inch eighth inch and then a sixteenth across the face I reckon a guy could use a bandsaw also if you have one and that's what you'd rather use bandsaw work good Like this one this is supposed to be my dirty one let's check it out I had to go get me a piece of pipe stretch a piece of pipe over it on test day, we normally break them like this. Break them over like this. Can y'all see that? All right, yeah, we normally break them this way. I'm guessing just because of the leverage aspect. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Yeah, y'all just witnessed that. Well, I guess it's uh, time to build me something for my old receiver hitch, I reckon. I reckon so. You know what? I might stick it in that uh, umbrella deal over there. Let's try that. All right. Let's try her again. Fellas. Try her one more time, boys. she looks like see what she looks like sure enough you can see a void there and a void there you see them little glider colored spots that means there's trash in it trash or void or slag or whatever and you can see them on the other side too same spots they say you want it to look like a broken file so like if you break them files they supply for us out on the pipeline on the inside of that it looks like that gray color like all this is clean but there's some spots in it i'll probably cut another strap to see try to get a more dirtier strap i think i can pull one out of the top to get a dirty one if you got in case you guys didn't see that real well Be the clean one. <laughs> Hope it's clean. Let's hope she's clean, boys. Oh, yeah, boy. I actually see a little little void in here I don't know if they'd call that or not but 
That's why I'm gonna pull a sure enough dirty one. Hopefully, that way you guys can see. All right, let's bend this one. Or break this one, I mean. They gonna break it. Oh yeah, that was sure enough, sure enough dark. Hey boys, this is what I was trying to portray. See that dark spot right here on the bottom, big old crack. lag right there so you're shooting for all solid gray is what you're shooting for like uh, like this one here solid gray versus this one bad weld good weld all right there you have it that gum hotter than hades in this shop holy nincompoop yeah there you have it that is uh the difference between a uh, dirty weld and a clean weld now i do want to add this uh disclosure or whatever you got like like levels of of like testing welds right like x-ray i would say is more tolerant i guess than like a bend test and then like your nicks are going to be more tolerant than a bend test so like these nicks will show you if there's sure enough trash in there but like just because i might have passed a nick test if i would have bent that weld it might have opened up depending on how clean it was so there are levels of like uh testing you know they got you know average downhill pipeline they shoot 1104 which is like a uh, 1104 versus b313 those are the two common x-ray codes that we hear all the time and b313 is more strict than 1104 but like on uh, some tests they say that they're going to be bending the you know say you take a 12 inch on a 45 they will actually tell you that they're going to be bending the straps on a b313 shoe which means it's a tighter bend versus 1104 shoe which is you know b313 1104 so it's like a tighter bend so it's more strict b313 is more strict but as far as like being at home and you could probably technically bend your own if you wanted to you know put it in a vice a good vice not one that's broke like mine <laughs> cheap such a tight wad but it caught up to me i've had that thing for like oh since 2000 12 probably so I've had it for about seven years but still I want stuff to last forever and yeah it should have lasted longer than that but anyway anyway you could probably put it in you could uh, but if you are gonna bend them you could probably put your strap in a vise and bend it if you are going to bend it sand down everything smooth obviously sand it down smooth and then try to bend it directly center uh, but this is like a easy fast way to tell you know if you're if your welds are you know somewhat clean so with all that being said i hope this video was helpful let me know in the comments if there's anything else any other questions that you might have any other uh videos pertaining to this that would be helpful and uh yeah i think it's gonna be it my advice for this week is take advantage of practice welds and and uh, try different techniques on practice welds. You know, try capping your welds lower on practice welds, not on a test, not out on the right of way. I mean, you, over time, you will probably end up doing it out on the right of way. But the time to practice different techniques is whenever you're practicing. And then you can bend your own straps or nick them at home to find out whether it, you know, is gonna be clean when it comes to, because that nick test right there is exactly one of the things that we do. Uh, out on pipeline jobs but yeah take advantage of practice welds and take your chances and your try different things on your practice welds versus like on test day or out on the right away so that's my advice other than that whenever you're making welds out on the right away make every weld like it's 
like you're gonna be bending straps out of it. You know, make every weld like it's shooting B313. You know, that's that's my advice for out on the right away. You wanna do the best you can. That's what you're there for, do a good job. And uh, yeah, just have fun. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.